Dawson. All right, well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat realm interview show. Joining me today is Jenny Josephson, or better known as Jenny J23 in the chat room. She's the producer of the Daily Tech News Show. Uh, how are you doing today, Jenny? I'm great. It's Saturday. I'm hanging out, having a good time. Excited to be here. Yeah, I, uh, I understand you're getting ready to go to a, a little bit of a party thing going on. So that should a be wedding. Fun. A wedding. Yeah, that's I consider them parties. That's <laughs> <laughs> parties excuse, with marriages right? attached. Yeah, exactly. So, well, um, speaking of your your chat name, Jenny J twenty three. How'd you how'd you get that? Were the other twenty two Jenny Js that that got to it faster than you, or? <laughs> Uh, no, so um, 23, you know how like everybody has numbers, right, that they love? So 23 is a number that I love because it is Jackie Robinson's number right before he went to Major League Baseball. Oh. So on one of his previous uh, Negro League teams, he was 23. And I loved it because like when you use 42, that's a, that's a number. You can't, can't get away from any of that number, <laughs> right. right? But I love 23. So anyway, that's it. No, oh, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting one. I, it's a little yeah. more mysterious than, than I thought. Some people just put like you know their birth year, but obviously you're not in you know your nineties. So <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It's not yet, coming. Yeah. It's coming. So eventually. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, you do a lot of tech related stuff. You know, being the uh, producer for the Daily Tech News Show and everything. So, what's your favorite non tech activity though? Oh boy, eating food. Eating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was easy. Done. Right. No, uh, I love too much food of all kinds, uh, healthy food, delicious food, high-end, hot cuisine, and cheeseburgers. I love everything. So all that's right. my non thing. Well, what's your, what's your favorite like meal to have? Like if you, if you were, you know, on death row, what, what would be the meal that you would pick then? Wow. Oh my gosh. Uh, Probably just like the best Chinese food ever with like a lot of dumplings and soup dumplings and bao and maybe like a key to the prison stuffed inside so I could leave. <laughs> Always thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how do I get out of this? No, that's, that, that's, that actually sounds really good. I, we need a good Chinese place up here. There's, there's not too many. So I mean, take, take the good with the bad, right? <laughs> mm hmm So uh, you're an avid uh, tweeter, twi twitterer. You tweeted a lot <laughs> um, what, what... Um, you know yeah go ahead sorry oh no go ahead I was just gonna say I was not an avid tweeterer uh, before I started working for Tom because I I kept working in these places that didn't really want me to have opinions <laughs> voiced out loud it was like part of the job like you're not supposed to share opinions uh, and so whoa hey <laughs> uh, and so uh, uh, it took working in a place where I just worked for one person to let me be okay tweeting on the internet. Oh, okay. Well, that's see, that's that's interesting. Though. And and it's kind of annoying that some places have policies like that. Like, uh, but it's also understandable at the same point too, because it's you know their company and they have to keep up a certain yeah. image or whatever. But they but... sure did want you to promote it to all your followers, <laughs> which you didn't have because you weren't allowed to actually express anything legitimate other than promote stuff. <laughs> Yeah, see, and that's and that, that's the the exact wrong way to go to go about it, because then yeah. you, it's like the worst of, of of both sides all around. Uh, so, getting into the more interesting questions, uh, if you were given a superpower, you gained a superpower one day. What what superpower would that be, and uh, what would you do with it? What's the first thing you would do? Hmm. I probably could not. Oh, wow. It's sort of a tie between flying and time travel. That's so I would definitely decision. want to be a time traveling superhero. Like I would want to be Sam Beckett from Quantum Leap. I would want to go <laughs> around and do good, but I would also want to be paid. And so like I would pay myself in 1958 $100 and put it in the bank. Oh, there and you just go. see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't <laughs> like, have to I see would what want happens. For profit. Sam Beckett from Quantum Leap. Right. Uh, but maybe if I couldn't time travel and if that was just too like bad for the space time continuum, I would just want to fly. Yeah, flying would be flying would be nice. Cheaper to, to get around anyway. Uh, at True. Today's rates. <laughs> Plus, you know, you don't have to go through the TSA <laughs> and uh, <you> know. yeah. <laughs> that would, I mean, uh, I would just I would want to be Superman. I mean, if you want 
would what superpower do you want? Superman's power. Super, see, fine. Superman's such a cheat, though, and I've always said this that he has every superpower, and that's not. That's come on. You, you got to have some I'm a some sort of downfall. I know, right? You got to have some sort of downfall, though. Except for oh no, he is weak to kryptonite that only exists from a planet that has exploded. So like, so there's basically none of it around. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's. I'm just saying he's he, he's oh, no. uh, he's kind of a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a nice guy. Well, that's true. You know, uh, speaking of planets, although hopefully the the non uh, exploded variety, um, if you could move to any planet, which uh, which would it be, and uh, what would your house be like? It doesn't have to be a real planet, just a, a you know fantasy one, or it could be a real one if you happen to have an idea for a habitat for like Mars or something. Oh wow. Um... I would probably want to live on pre-explosion Alderaan by like maybe a thousand years, right? Oh, like yeah. I would definitely want like multiple generations of my children to have lived and died before they blow up Alderaan. <laughs> but it seems like from all intents and purposes, Alderaan seems like a lovely place to be. Right, definitely. Well, that sounds like that would a, be my, That's my planet. What's your plan? What, what kind of house would you have? Uh... One that flies off the planet at just the right time. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah, I suppose that would be that would be excellent to have, especially in in that situation. Yeah. Well, you had uh, you had also mentioned that you were a producer. You did a lot of producing for things. What was your favorite producing gig, or the one that was maybe the most fun to to do? Oh, there were so many, uh, but. Right after I left CBS News and a couple years before I um, went to Yahoo, I worked a little while for Dan Rather Reports. Now, do you know Dan Rather? Yeah, I don't know who Dan Rather is. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you have to ask. I don't know. No, I suppose. Uh, you, you never know. Like, I, I've said this and the people are like, who? Um, <laughs> so I worked at Dan Rather Reports, which was Dan's post-CBS gig, and... I worked for this tremendous producer named Sally Garner, and she was just like aces. She was so good at thinking big and doing big things. And her biggest coup was getting Dan over to India, to Dharamsala, India, to interview the Dalai Lama. And I got to go as the associate producer. Wow. And let me tell you something. That was awesome. Um, we stayed at the Dalai Lama's brother's guest house. Uh, and we um, went and interviewed His Holiness, and everybody lost their minds because he's pretty cool. Dan didn't lose his mind. Dan was cool. Um, and it was just, like, such an amazing experience. It was my, I think it was my only overseas job for journalism. And just being in India was so overwhelming and amazing, and then being there with Dan and then um, uh, meeting the Dalai Lama. It was, like, it was a big week. I won't right. lie. Then I got sick. Oh. Pretty awesome. <laughs> I got a respiratory infection and couldn't breathe on the like 18 hour flight home. It was great. Oh, that's terrible. That sound, that does sound like an amazing time though. Oh, man. It was it, it was almost like the beginning of a joke, which is like so Dan rather and the Dalai Lama walk into a really <laughs> nice room and uh, um and I was there and I was there. So that's like an incredible. And just like driving places in like a van with Dan rather and talking about journalism or like talking about writing for broadcast or um talking about like he would have we would have these long huge vegetarian dinners at late hours and dan would just sit there and tell stories and he is and i'm if you could, could only imagine an unparalleled storyteller he he just they they just roll in like the waves it's it's great oh i bet he's got a million of them too because you know he's been to most of the places that he's had to report on and stuff so that's mm -hmm. or even just it's interesting incredible. reports that come in at inopportune times you know that's, <laughs> I'm, yeah i'm sure he's got a billion awesome stories it's pretty great so you also produce for dtns as as many of us well know um what's a guest that you haven't yet booked for dtns that you would really love to or maybe that you're trying mm. to but <laughs> haven't been able to uh, it is on my list to book uh, so many people, but one of them is John C. Dvorak, because uh, we had Adam Curry on, and I would like to talk to John, or have uh, Tom talk to John. Um, another one is, I'm blanking, I have this whole list of people that we want to get to, because it's sort of an art form to make sure that we're 
both getting all the people that you really do want to see at least once a month and getting really authoritative people who are actually out reporting on the field. But then you also don't want to forget that there are um, incredible other people that you just like don't even think of. Like the universe of tech reporting and tech commentary is so huge that we could go three years without getting all the people we wanted to get on the show. Wait, hold on. Stand by. I'm going to cough. <coughs> there, I'm back. Uh, so... Um, He's one. Uh, who's another one that we keep talking about? I'm looking at our brainstorming channel right now. Um, Father Robert would like to get. Oh, he'd be um, fun. And he's John Stewart time. came up. Oh, really? Uh, That'd be well, awesome. why not? I mean, yeah. we're talking about this was a this was one of the people who. Um, Alan Char, who writes into the show a lot, sent us this huge list of who they wanted to see. <coughs> oh, I love coughing on the air. Um, and most <laughs> of them, actually, we've gotten on. But Father Robert was one that we didn't get on. And um, I, did like his, I did like his moxie in suggesting Jon Stewart. Yeah, that would well, that'd be awesome. I mean, maybe he's not going to have a lot to do soon. So you never know. <laughs> it's a nice window. <laughs> right. Definitely. Uh, so, so you do have a, another podcast that you do called Tell It Anyway. Um, what's yeah, and you always have topic themed shows, which is which is always fun because you can tell stories around the topic. Um, what's a really fun topic that you that you have planned for one? Maybe that yeah, I probably don't even have recorded yet, but a topic that you have planned for an upcoming one that's fun. Uh, so we taped one on humiliation last week. Ooh. Uh, we taped one called a very long way last week. That was great. Uh, which is an open-ended phrase as opposed to like one word. And one that we have coming up is, um, how did I get here? <laughs> which sounds like it's going to be awesome. Um, because it's just stories. like, and I'm, I'm looking <laughs> up really quickly. We had some great title topics. We just keep like making them up. Like sometimes we try to tailor them to the guest. Uh, this is essentially a storytelling podcast where three people tell each tell a story around a central topic and then there's just this like very loose discussion in between it's entirely designed to be like what it's like if you're all hanging out at a bar or at a great restaurant or whatever it is and so it's the whole point is to keep it as like laid back and non moth like as possible no, um that's, that's, so been that's really fun to listen to yeah, I hope. So. Thank you. I hope so. Um, I'm looking at. I'm looking at this list. Uh, we have one called "I Know It Was You, Fredo: Stories of Betrayal" that we'd like to do. <laughs> um, your own personal ghost story, bad roommate, um, outside looking in. That time I was an outsider. Aging parents, getting fucking older. That's an actual topic name. Nice. And. <laughs> I'm looking for one. The drunkest I ever got it, which I think we're doing on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, well, this, see, that's a perfect time for that topic. And and possibly related to the how did I get here topic. Exactly. <laughs> they, they overlap, for sure. Right. That, that's wonderful. I, I really do enjoy listening to the show because there's, there's so many interesting stories that, that people have that, you know, if I'm not friends with them and I can't just be sitting down with a beer, then I would never have heard, uh, you know, them, them tell this story, which is which is really what this feels like is, you know, couple guys like i'd imagine it to be like uh if, if you ever watch how i met your mother them all just sitting down at the bar yeah. uh or you know at, at a table in the bar just telling stories around beers so that's <laughs> that's my exact goal that's my exact goal we do it really casually like people sometimes come sometimes we do it on skype sometimes people come to the office here and we sit around a table and uh tell stories and i find that both are really interesting like uh different ways to do it uh but it's just like Matt, my husband Matt and I have so many interesting friends who aren't necessarily public facing. They don't want to be famous or be on camera necessarily. Some of them do very much. Some of them are. And um, we just want to get their stories down because we have enjoyed them so much over the years. So tell it anyway dot com. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Speaking of I'm not plugs. not good at the plug. No, that's all right. That's all perfect. What, uh, you, you got other ones? You have your Twitter handle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jenny J. J E N N I E J twenty three, um, where I complain and promote and um, occasionally uh, talk trash about the Diamond Club Trivia League. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, I think you're you're beating me so far. So 
<laughs> yeah, I did okay. I did okay this round. Uh, not fantastic. Because my mistake is like whenever I see the notification, I'm like, I'll do it right now. And wherever I am, whether it's in a restaurant or like lying in bed about to fall asleep, I'll just do the trivia thing. But I really realized that I should probably be doing them in a closed room with no distraction and no people around and just focus, <laughs> and I might actually do better. Right, yeah. I, I always end up getting distracted by something while, while I'm trying to do it. And, you know, I'm going to use excuses, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, this, this actually, this last set of questions was, was pretty tough. But, but uh, this whole last round was actually, this whole last week was, was kind of yeah. annoying. But, no, that's it's a, it's a lot of fun to, to be in the... To do to do that, like we should end up doing a show about that one of these days, <laughs> the whole trivia <laughs> show. But uh, but you yeah. also have uh, about dot me slash jjo. That's your about dot me page. And, that's uh, like the dump. That's the brag. The brag dumping grounds. Like I did this here. I did this. That's like if you want to see like the whole painful history of what I've done out there. That about dot me slash jjo. It's like your tro trophy showcase. Thing. Trophy shelf, yeah. online trophy shelf. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's. Yeah, I, I need to get better about working on my page. I don't. I don't do a whole lot to my <laughs> my about me yeah. page, but I have my so own wait, website. Can, so, before we go, can you tell me? Just tell me about how the Diamond Club started. Just like explain it to me because I come in there. I come in that chat. I come in every day and drop some links to Beatmaster. I do all this stuff, but I always feel like I get out of there really quickly because I'm like, ah, I'm like most of these people's mom's age. I should go. Um, so just tell me how it started. Um, yeah, well, I don't obviously have the 100% story, and uh, a, a good little plug for myself will be on April 4th, we'll have Brian Brushwood on, who will uh, add probably the most light of anybody uh, to, to, that they can shed on that story. But um, the way that I uh, understand it is with uh, Tom, you know, leaving Twit, and with, uh, you know, around the same time, Brian and Justin leaving Twit, they all kind of started getting together and deciding to not really even have a podcast network, more of a loose confederation of people that are all fans of the same stuff <laughs> you know it's uh so so it, it's that's actually what they ended up doing and and brian um cr ended up coining the term diamond club uh by accident apparently <laughs> so uh <laughs> the, yeah so it's, it's nothing even even that crazy it's just kind of uh and everybody decided to to help each other out when they all went to independent and everything so okay yeah. All right. I like it because I came in and I'm just super clueless about all this stuff. Like I, I came in from a different universe and I dropped into this universe and um, I really always like hearing about how it all came to be. Oh, absolutely. And well, you've been here right about since since the beginning because you've been with Tom pretty much since he started. Yeah, but it's funny. Like I was doing the job, but I didn't really uh, understand really anything about the culture or the history or anything like I was just it was a lot of stuff to pick up just doing the job itself and Tom's been fantastic about sort of training me up and gently introducing me to the broader universe uh yeah so yeah it's I, I'm always still I'm always still looking for history and tips and of course stories so oh of course that's uh yeah there's there's lots of stories I try to get some people to tell stories on here so <laughs> you can find out more about it, more of them Okay. Um, which is really the reason why I made this podcast is, you know, we know people in the chat room, but we don't necessarily get to sit down with them for half an hour and talk, <laughs> you know, and figure out who they are and, and just get to know everybody. So well, that's, that's very that's awesome. awesome. You can find all your DTNS work at uh, DTNS.tv or DailyTechNewsShow.com. And uh, I don't know, anything else that you that you want to plug there? Uh, I mean, DailyTechNewsShow.com is pretty awesome but you all know that already well, of uh, course. and uh, I won't be unfortunately I won't be at South by Southwest this year which I'm super bummed about because I'm in New York for a memorial service uh, but I will be at Nerdtacular so yay yay I'm gonna be I just bought uh, my wife and I just bought tickets to Nerdtacular to this morning so oh fantastic so yeah, we'll see you there definitely I won't be there for all three days I'm gonna hopefully mm -hmm. see if I can do uh, like Friday evening or maybe I don't know. Figure figure out. Stay over one night and then try to hit two of the days or something. So, got it. We'll get that figured out. But yeah, it'll be a cool. great time to see everybody, including yourself and all the hosts and everybody. So, <laughs> <It'll> be <awesome. laughs> I'll be wandering the hallways with the microphone. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. See, Tell you me a should. Story. No, you definitely should. You should record everybody's stories there and then do a do a a nerdtacular themed. Uh, uh, tell it anyway. With of course, I like get permission it. from. Can people. I book you for it? Will you be on it? Yeah, I'm. I'm happy to All be right, on there, it. All right, done. 
Done. Guest one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like an, an excellent time. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Jenny. And, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. And as always, you can catch more of these interviews at tinvec.com slash dd. There's uh, subscription links there as well to subscribe on our iTunes and all the other stuff. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>